In this video, we'll be talking about China uh, logistics, sourcing from China, and uh, we will be mostly focusing on what's new related to China, what, uh, how anything with that country is affecting, affected by world events. And uh, now it's 2022, so we have a guest, Gary Huang from 8020 Sourcing. He also runs Seven Figure Seller Summit. And uh, he his main focus in knowledge is uh, China and sourcing products from that country. And he will give us an update what's happening. Before we continue with this session, I would like to inform that we have sponsors uh, supporting this uh, Seller Fest online event and also the session. So one of them is uh, Getida. They are providing FBA auditing and reimbursement ser service for Amazon sellers to claim money back from Amazon. And you can check the link and offer from them below in the description. Also, Helium 10 is an all-in-one suite uh, for Amazon and Walmart sellers. So if you need help uh, with any kind of tools, automatization or keyword uh, research, check them out. Again, the link below in the description. Another sponsor of this event is uh, Perpetua. They provide e-commerce advertising optimization and intelligence software for Amazon, Walmart, and a few other marketplaces. Again, link below. And Z can help you with a, a, their complete solution for compliance, customs, logistics, and basically one one-stop shop for your global expansion of your Amazon uh, e-commerce brands. Check the link below. And finally, Unibrands, they acquire Amazon brands, Shopify, direct-to-consumer brands, and if you want to sell and make an ex exit of your Amazon business, check the link below and talk to Unibrands. And uh, this session I will be hosting together with uh, Sofia. Hello, Sofia. Hello, Augustus. Thank you so much for having me. I am very excited about today and about today's topic. So also with us, we have Gary. Welcome, Gary. Why don't we start out here. by having you introduce yourself and tell us how you help Amazon sellers. Definitely. Well, thank you, Augustus and Sophia, for having me. I'm super excited today. We're going to give you a update about China sourcing. And um, as Augustus had mentioned earlier, I run a site called 8020 Sourcing, where we help Amazon e-commerce sellers really save time and money when sourcing from overseas and uh, really focusing on China today. And I also run a virtual event called the Seven Figure Seller Summit, where we really um, invite seven figure sellers to teach you how to build, scale, and exit your business. But today we're going to focus entirely on sourcing. And I want you to give you guys the latest update from China, because literally things are changing not only every week, but every day. So um, I have the latest information as of um, yesterday. Right. And actually, I wanted to mention, completely forgot, like if you enjoy any information you hear in this video, don't forget to cl click, like, like, orange click and orange like anything you see below the video, the like and the subscribe buttons. And if you will have any questions, uh, there will be no slides, but we'll be uh, listening to Gary's points, which he wants to share. If you have additional questions, always use the chat to ask, and we will bring them here on here. Cool. So then let's jump into it. So, Gary, what is new then when it comes to this topic? Tell us. Definitely. So um, first off, why is this important, right? Um, I feel like even though there's a lot of... Um, you know, interest in shifting away from China sourcing. At the end of the day, China is still the number one manufacturer all over the world. And I would say if you're an Amazon seller, uh, most of you guys are sourcing from China. So what is new? Basically, China is getting hit with ongoing COVID outbreaks. So they, if we re rewind it to like two years ago, you know, after the initial pandemic, it seemed they had things under control. You know, people were just free to just go out and, you know, eat dinner and meet with their friends. But as of the last couple of weeks to one month, China's really getting hit with COVID outbreaks. Entire cities are getting shut down, like Shenzhen was getting shut down. And as of right now, half of Shanghai is in lockdown. I mean, Shanghai is a city with 23 million people so imagine if like half of new york city was locked down right now you know what would be going on especially if you're um sourcing and shipping from china so i wanted to give you guys the latest update 
Um, one key difference between China and the rest of the world when it comes to COVID is they have a zero tolerance policy. So what does that mean? China is really trying to like make sure there's zero cases. So entire cities are just getting shut down, you know, from day to day with very little warning. Um, so this is going to affect you if you're sourcing from China, if you're working with a factory, and even with all of the logistics, you know, the truckers, like roads are getting shut down and also uh, ports may be affected as well. So today we're going to give you an overview of what sort of delays can you expect, what parts of China are being affected by the COVID lockdowns, as well as some of the, the shipping cost updates. Everyone knows that we're still in the perfect storm of sh really high shipping costs. Are these prices coming down? And then also I want to give you some real world advice. What can sellers do to reduce this impact if you are being affected? So that's that's the game plan for today. How does that sound, guys? Sounds great. I think we need to know that this is happening because there are definitely things in our supply chain that yeah, we plan in one way. So it's very important for us to know that uh, yeah, things perhaps are not going according to the plan and our timelines may change. So what sort of uh, delays do you think sellers and people looking to source from China may expect now and yeah, maybe from which regions you mentioned that as well? Definitely. And then also, I, I'd like to make this interactive. So I know a lot of people are joining you in from all over the world. Have your suppliers been affected by all of these lockdowns? If so, could you type in the chat? I'm curious what everyone is seeing because, you know, China is a huge place and we're going to go over a lot of different areas. OK, so first off, um, what sort of delays can you expect? So, you know, in terms of supply chain, if you literally think of this as a chain, uh, you're only as strong as your weakest link. Okay, so the supply chain starts from not just your factory, but also the raw materials, and maybe you have some subcomponents for like a bundled item. You know, even if your factory is still working, if they can't get that, you know, fabric or if they can't get that little accessory, your your whole deliveries are going to be delayed. Okay, so overall, we're seeing. Uh, the biggest thing is we're seeing issues that, you know, China is trying to get stuff, you know, from one city to another. So, for example, with one of the factories that I'm working with in Shandong province, you know, even though our main product is ready, um, they can't get one of the, the bundled like it's um, it's an accessory. So it's a glove. Basically, it's not something that is the core product, but it's like a bundled item. But that glove supplier, that marketplace is shut down. So that's affecting one of our deliveries. So that's just an example. Um, I've I've also spoken with a number of sellers uh, based in China. I spoke with an eight-figure seller who has um, eight. He, they, he assembles his products in Shenzhen. So they have um, um, a warehouse that they use in Shenzhen, and then he sources from all over China. He sources from Zhejiang Province, from Wenzhou, from Yiwu, from Dongguan, and also from Jiangsu. And then he says. Um, you know, it, there's going to be problems, but it's only been temp temporary, so a week or two. Okay, so um, I I'm, I don't expect the whole thing to be you know delaying everything, but definitely there will be delays of at least a week or two. And then at the the factory level, um, with one of the factories that I'm talking to in Shenzhen, um, the factories uh, the workers may not be able to go to work. Okay, because in that region they're they're locked down. So only about one quarter of the employees, like there's, they have about 100 employees, only about 20, 25 are able to go to work right now. So that's definitely affecting the, the production. And also, um, as I mentioned earlier, the subcomponent suppliers may be shut down. So that's causing delays, even if your factory is operating. Okay, so that's on the, the factory and then the production side. In terms of the shipping, um, this is something a lot of people overlook because they think, oh, my factory is working. So if the order is done, I can get it shipped, right? Not so fast because there's lockdowns at the different city levels as well. So I'm going to go over the different regions after we um, talk about the sort of delays that we can expect. So in terms of shipping, trucking. Okay, so imagine after your container is ready from the factory, there has to be a truck that comes to load the container onto the truck and then drive it out from the factory to the port. Okay, so the roads may be locked down. They may be shut down. As of right now, 
um, half of Shanghai is shut down. So if you're using Shanghai port, that may affect your your deliveries, right? Even if your factory is not is um, is not affected. And then in addition, you also have to consider your port, right? You're different. There's different ports. You know, Shenzhen was locked down a few weeks ago. Um, and then it affected the ports as well. So we all have to consider all these different parts of the supply chain. Um, so that's in terms of the delays. Overall, I would expect at least one or two weeks. That's the norm. Don't expect everything, anything to be delivered on time right now because even the suppliers themselves, they literally, they don't know what's going to happen the next day. Um, China, you know, I've lived in China over a decade. It's kind of unpredictable and um, you have to really re uh, pivot quickly. Okay, so those that's kind of the overview of the sort of delays that can be expected. If you have any questions, Sophia, or anyone in the audience, please let me know. Um, otherwise, uh, do we have any questions so far, or should we move forward to the parts of China that are affected? I think we can continue uh, painting the picture. Basically, we have Gabriel here saying that he's also experiencing huge delays from his suppliers in Shenzhen. So yeah, I think it definitely it's already noticeable. Um, and then we have already some questions coming up, but I think we can continue. We can go to those later. Yes. Afterwards. Thank you guys for, for the updates. And it's very interesting mm -hmm. because, you know, China is a huge place, right? So we see, you know, Gabriel sourcing from Shenzhen. We see um, Daniel sourcing from Ningbo. So um, next, I'd like to give you a kind of a, a breakdown. So we're going to start from the south and then go to the middle and to the north of China uh, based on the latest updates. And again, this is as of today because... Um, you know, I was talking to Augustus just last week. He wanted me to prepare slides. I'm like, if I prepare slides from last week to this week, the whole thing is going to be old news. <laughs> That's why I don't have any slides today, because literally I was talking to people until like midnight last night, Asia time. OK, so here's the latest. All right. What parts of China are being affected by the COVID lockdowns? So I'm going to start in the south of China, um, Shenzhen, Dongguan, Guangzhou, so, you know, a lot of people are sourcing from there, especially if you're doing electronics, if you're doing fact, um, textiles. So lockdowns were in place as of about two weeks ago in Shenzhen, the entire city of Shenzhen. They call it like the Silicon Valley of China. The whole city was shut down. Uh, you know, people were stuck in their apartment complexes. They couldn't go out and, you know, they can only order food deliveries to the to like the gate. OK, um, the whole city and factories and the port around in and around Shenzhen Dongguan was shut down for a few days up to a week but as of right now the COVID cases are under control so the government has rapidly reopened the city everything has been reopened as of about a week ago and um, the factories that were shut down they're back reopen and the ports are opening as well so um, if you know people like I think it was Gabriel sourcing from Shenzhen um, if you were affected, I would, you know, every day check with your supplier to see if they're back on schedule to be reopened. So as of now, Shenzhen is, is reopened. But one caveat is if you, you know, Shenzhen borders Hong Kong, right? So Hong Kong has a lot of COVID cases right now. And then um, the government is very, very strict anytime they're moving any products across the border from Hong Kong to China. Um, you know, one of my friends in Shenzhen said that he had his credit card sent from Hong Kong to Shenzhen. And literally, they stopped it three times to screen it, to um, spray it down with alcohol, to even like UV light sterilize it. So if you have anything moving from Hong Kong to Shenzhen for your products, expect some delays there. OK, they're really focusing on this, um, you know, logistics, even like, you know, packages um, spreading COVID. China is really um, paying attention to that. Okay, so that's part one. So Shenzhen, Dongguan, as of right now, they're reopened. Okay, so part two, let's move up further up the coast to Zhejiang province. So if anyone's manufacturing in Ningbo, Yiwu, Wenzhou, this is the region that we're talking about. Okay, Zhejiang province, um, as of right now, according to my on-the-ground reports, um, everything is... It, there's no lock, there's no major lockdown. Um, everything is operating normally. Uh, there's not many COVID cases here, and most cases there's no lockdown. But there could be little pockets 
like small local areas, you know, certain towns or even villages that may experience lockdowns, maybe just a few kilometers or miles where COVID cases are found. So as of right now in Zhejiang province, um, I would say it's pretty much green light, you know, things are operating as normal. Okay, so um, I think I saw in the chat someone was sur sourcing from Nimbo. Daniel said, advise one to two week delay for goods to be ready. Yes, I would say one to two week delay. That's like the normal expectation right now, um, given COVID. All right, so that's part two. Zhejiang, I would say, is green light. So next, let's move up further a little bit to, part, to Shanghai. Okay, uh, this is part three. As of right now, Shanghai, I would say it's uh, it's pretty much a red light because half of the city is locked down so shanghai is divided into two parts there's um, Puxi, which is the west side of the city and Pudong, which is the east side of the, of the city so china's doing something very um i think radical is they're not locking down the whole city they're locking down like the west half of the city um from march 28th until april 1st so as of today you know literally 24 hours ago it's being locked down and then the other half of the city will be locked down from April 1st to, I believe, April 4th or 5th. So they're locking down the city in two parts. Okay. Um, as of you know today, Shanghai is one of the most expensive cities in China, if not the world to live in. So you're not going to see any factories in Shanghai. Um, you may have like a trading company that has an office address in Shanghai, but um, how does this affect sellers? A lot of sellers ship out of the port of Shanghai, which is the busiest port in china okay so the port is really the thing that you guys have to pay attention to because imagine if half the city if half the roads are closed um then you have to make sure can your products get from your factory to shanghai port so if you have a shipment shipping out of shanghai port i would definitely talk to your supplier talk to your freight forwarder to make sure that they they can still get the the goods to the port okay as of yesterday according to my on the ground report the shanghai port is still open but some warehouses may be affected right because some warehouses they may be helping um you know, doing LCL shipments, FCL shipments, if you're doing um, you know, assembly and um, if they're loading the containers, that may be affected. So there's going to be some uncertainty until early April in terms of this. Okay, so um, Shanghai, I would say it's red light right now. You know, if if you're shipping out of the port, especially, definitely talk to your freight forwarder and your supplier to make sure um, you can mitigate these, these challenges. All right. So next i'd like to move further up to northern china to part four um so some of you guys may be sourcing from regions like shandong province and um, you know, one of the suppliers that i'm working with personally is in the weifang region in shandong province so um as of right now they are in lockdown so their region is in lockdown their city you know parts of the city are in lockdown so um, with this factory, there's about 100 employees. Only about one quarter of the employees are allowed to go to work right now because there's sporadic um, you know, cases of COVID. So only certain, imagine certain towns may be affected. Thank you for the map. So if you can um, highlight Shandong province, um, my screen is like kind of small right now. Which so, color or which at the top? Yes, yes. So yes, perfect. So this part is being um, quite severely affected. So one of my factories in that region, there are um, about one quarter of the employees can go to work. Three quarters cannot go to work. Um, there's only one salesperson in the office. Usually there's probably like a dozen. Okay, so um, the thing with China is like, it's not very transparent with the news. So you really have to talk to your suppliers, guys, if you're sourcing from China to find out what's going on. Because I talked to the supplier in Shandong last week, they thought that by this week, Monday, you know, they'll be allowed to go back to work, but no, <laughs> they found out Monday, they cannot. Okay, so um, it's really unpredictable. I would really advise that everyone talk to their suppliers to find out the latest. Okay, um, so, obviously their you know three quarter capacity is is cut back right now so they're being affected and also the um the subcomponent 
fact factories are being affected so again if you're bundling any items you know talk to your factories and make sure they can get all of those accessories um, available as well because those those suppliers may be affected by the lockdowns as well so remember you know think of the link right your supply chain is only as strong as your weakest link so if you can't get your box you know it's going to get delayed right if you can't get that little maybe cleaning uh kit that you're bundling with your product it's going to cause a delay all right um so as of right now there's still cases in this region all right um another interesting note is that uh, the domestic logistics in China are being affected as well. So uh, the number one domestic China e-commerce shopping platform is Taobao. Uh, Taobao is owned by Alibaba. So as of right now, even in Shandong province, they can't even get e-commerce deliveries because China is really scared about COVID spreading on packages. Okay, so that could affect your um, your production as well. Uh, one bright note is as of right now in Shandong, the international logistics are still operating as normal. So if you're you know, air shipping FedEx, they can still ship it out. Okay, um, so definitely talk to your suppliers. So maybe if we go back to the map, we can um, you know highlight to recap again. So starting from Shenzhen, uh, Dongguan down south, if you can highlight, yes. Okay, so this part is green light. Everything is back to operation. It was shut down two weeks ago, but as of right now, this is green light. So Shenzhen, Dongguan, Guangzhou, if last week or two weeks ago, your supplier was locked down, definitely talk to them right now because I would say they're back to business. Okay, secondly is Zhejiang province. Um, this, this is, you know, there's Ningbo, there's Yiwu, Ningbo, so just south of Shanghai that area there. So uh, this is mostly operating as normal, small pockets of lockdowns, um, not many cases. Okay. Shanghai, I would say is in the red right now, half the city is locked down. Again, there's no, you know, major factories in Shanghai, but the port, right? So definitely talk to your factory about that. And then Northern China, uh, Shandong, there's uh, I would say it's red, it's yellow light right now. There's, um, they're supposed to come back soon, but they're still waiting and seeing. All right, so that's the the quick overview of the parts of China affected by COVID lockdowns. Any questions, or should we keep going to the shipping costs? Any questions about these provinces? I don't see much. <sighs> We don't have any questions about that, but from what I understand, the situation is also mutable, right? So what's happening right now can also change somehow quickly. So we should stay. It's changing day by day, Sophie. Okay. <laughs> it's changing day by day. So yeah, maybe, you know, Shandong tomorrow, they'll be back open. Um, mm -hmm. But I just wanted to give you the latest. Literally, this is like, you know, like the news report for today. So, so we should okay. stay in touch with our suppliers and make sure yes, that we yes. know. Yes, yes. Okay. Let, let's take some. There are two questions from Gabriel, so that mm -hmm. we interact with the audience. Uh, uh, the first one, <laughs> okay, is the first one is I have uh, always focused on searching my suppliers on Alibaba. Do you recommend any other platforms to look for suppliers? Yes, uh, Global Sources is another good online platform that you can source from. Um, they're strong in certain industries like electronics, fashion items, travel. So I would definitely take a look at them. And sometimes you can find suppliers on one platform that is not on others. All right. And is it, um, would you say it is uh, worse to source through Alibaba? Just a question that I also have because it is so known, right? I, w I wouldn't say it's necessarily worse i would say you know you have to do your homework on alibaba um maybe for beginners just starting out alibaba is the quickest one but i would definitely look at global sources because there are some suppliers on one that are not on the other if you want to look for you know suppliers in different parts of the world for example india um india sourcing network they have um a website with vetted suppliers as well. So I think that could be another option. Um, you know, our friend uh, Megala Bardwaj, she runs uh, India Sourcing um, Trip. And so I would look at that. 
And I would also check for some, um, you know, there's online trade shows nowadays because co obviously China is still locked down, right? So I would look for industry specific trade shows. So depending on what industry you guys are sourcing from, like Gabriel, you know, if you're in, you know, sports goods, I would look for sports goods trade shows. If, um, yeah, so that that's, that, thanks for bringing that up. Or so India, um, so India is good for certain products such as more handmade products. Um, more um, natural like wooden products um, certain types of metals they're not as strong in terms of like machine made mass production products so um yeah that that would be uh, some quick advice for you and um you know i've you know i, I could talk about this for like half an hour so i i don't want to go too deep but you know check out our website 8020 sourcing uh, we have um additional articles you can read and also i have a free email newsletter that we send out every friday so i give the latest updates on you know china sourcing and e-commerce news so if this is helpful you know feel free to sign up for the newsletter it's free very good and uh, i mean since we're on it we can also talk about this uh, question or comment from gabriel in which he says how you know you also mentioned there is this trend in which people try to source outside of China because of shipping costs, because of a lot of different reasons, but that the cost of goods are not even comparable. What is your opinion on this topic? Do you think uh, this trend will continue? Do you think it will change? Yeah, so that's a really good question, Gabriel. I would say you have to know your numbers. You have to look at the landed cost, right? So not only the, the factory cost, but you have to consider, you know, the cost of shipping, right? So as of right now, it's very expensive to ship from um, overseas. So I know that some sellers, for example, based in the U.S., even though the U.S., the product cost is higher than China and the labor cost is higher, if they consider at the end of the, the landed cost, you know, after all the shipping costs, also the, after the duties, the tariffs, and also the time it takes to ship from, you know, for example, China or India, it was actually cheaper for them to source it locally in the US. So Gabriel, depending on what type of product you're sourcing, I would consider that. I do know some seven figure eight figure sellers they are sourcing from parts of europe you know eastern europe and then they may assemble locally um you know in their own country so definitely do your numbers um you have to look at the landed cost so that would be my advice All right so it is a case by case decision then i think we should yeah. we should then continue uh talking about costs and shipping costs because some of the other questions we have are also about this topic and i'm also wondering definitely. So yeah. down the chain, what happens then? Yes. So shipping costs are still very high, you know, much higher now than before the pandemic started. So at, at the peak, well, before, let me just give you the overview. So before the pandemic, you know, 2019, we were seeing roughly costs around $2,000 for a container shipped from, let's say, China to the West Coast US, um, let's say, Port of Long Beach, Los Angeles. At the peak, of the pandemic, I would say the shipping costs were north of twenty thousand dollars. You know, twenty four thousand dollars. That's ten x to even twelve x the cost, which is you know really through the roof, right? I was going to As ask, of did right, you say two thousand before? Yeah, from two thousand to twenty to twenty four thousand. Oh, wow. So ten a... x to you know twelve x. So you don't have to be like a math genius to know it's very very expensive, right? <laughs> so um, as of right now we're seeing that sea freight we have some good news which i'm happy to share but we haven't returned to those pre-pandemic levels we're seeing sea freight has been dropping in the past couple of months um you know after chinese new year and you know i was talking to uh eight figure seller they said that you know it is a good trend it is starting to drop it's not you know completely to that level yet um i would you know i would look at that and um there's you know different freight forwarders out there um you know amazon you know some people know that amazon runs their own logistics company called amazon global logistics so their rates may be a little bit cheaper than the the regular freight forwarders out there so one quick tip um you may you guys may want to check them out um they but you have to look at the time it takes because they 
you know, ultimately it also, you have to consider how long it takes, but they may be a little bit cheaper. So that could be um, a quick tick for, for some of you guys. All right. So it, it is moving in a good direction. I cannot, I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know if the prices are going to rebound or not, but as a general trend, um, that's where we're seeing. So it is moving towards um, slightly lower prices. In terms of air freight, uh, this is kind of tricky right now. It's, it's very volatile. Um, prices are high. And one of the reasons is because of the war and the fuel prices. So I'm not going to get into that, but um, I would definitely, you know, monitor your, um, your air freight. Um, you know, if you're working with a freight forwarder or, you know, talk to also consider different options out there like FedEx, DHL, et cetera. So I would say on the whole volatility, it's kind of like the stock market up and down, up and down. It's still, it's still quite high. But the trend is slightly coming down. So um, definitely keep your eyes on that. Let's hope it comes down again. Uh, we have someone saying here that their stuff shipping by air from Ningbo to the US is being diverted through Shenzhen now while Pudong area of Shanghai is locked down. So exactly the effect. Exactly. That, that was my point earlier because half of Shanghai is locked down. So um i'm gonna get into some tips about what you can do to to mitigate that but thank you patrick for that for sharing that there's also another input here someone that definitely felt the difference in air shipping costs so in the last two months gabriel said that air shipping costs has fluctuated a lot from 50 to 98 it is possible to get ahead of this price um moves to take advantage of price drops is it possible it's like trying to time the stock market, Gabriel. Um, you know, one of one of my contacts on the ground, um, eight figure seller, he said that he shipped his product for the first time by air in like two years, like right once the war first broke out, you know, it like the price bottom, like through the bottom. And then he was lucky to get that. But then afterwards it just peaked all the way up again. So he's not shipping by air again. So I'm not like like a stock picker. <laughs> so I would just say, you know, if you got to ship your product out, just ship it out. You know, time is money. If you're going to, it's much better than being out of stock, right? You know, paying a little bit more, but again, you got to do your numbers. You got to run your numbers. I mean, there's ways that you can reduce your, your, your cost. There's ways that you can increase your profitability as well, but I, I wouldn't try to delay to try to time the, the market. Usually timing the market is, is tough. <laughs> it's not a, the best strategy. And um, there's also another comment here, another question that maybe we can then start to go into what do you think and from what is your advice for sellers in order to reduce the impact? But Angelica yes. asks, aside from the delay in logistics, do you think we should also make an adjustment about the effect of lockdown in concern to the manufacturer's lead time? Yes, yes, definitely. So let's... That's a great question. And let's segue into the, the next part of our training today, ways to reduce the impact what you can do. Okay. So I'd like to offer um, four tips for you guys. I would say the number one thing that you can do is to communicate with your suppliers, you know, communicate with them, talk to them, we chat them, email them, WhatsApp them. Okay. Um, ask them about what they're seeing, what they're expecting with the lockdowns. Are they operating back to normal, like in Shenzhen? Or are they, you know, if they're shipping out of Shanghai, you know, with like Patrick, do we have to to pivot? Do we have to, you know, are we being affected? I would say that's number one. Um, not just about your main product. Again, you know, talking about all the raw materials, the subcomponents, ask them, you know, hey guys, are you are your raw materials or can you still get them on time? Or hey, can you get that bundle item? So I would say that's number one, right? Really communicate with your suppliers. Obviously, number two is keep up with the news, um, you know, pay attention to what's going on in China. You know, maybe they can turn this thing around by next week. You know, it's things move very quickly in China. So definitely pay attention to the news. Um, again, as I mentioned earlier, like a shameless plug, um, I, you know, I I write a weekly free newsletter called the 8020 of e-commerce. So, you know, two weeks ago we were talking about these delays in Shenzhen and last week we said things are reopening. So maybe this Friday something will come up. So I definitely recommend that you guys um, check that out. And if you guys stay until the end, I have a, a free bonus for you guys that you can, you can get as well. Um, and I, that's why that's number two, keep up with the news. Number three, um, this is very important is we have to be very flexible. We have to be able to pivot quickly 
in our business. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Um, I would say first off, um, in terms of the the supply chain sourcing from China, you have to know your options. All right, so um, let's say your factory is back to normal, but if the port's being affected, you have to know the ports that are all around your factory, right? So you have to know the different, the transportation options, the the different costs, right? So you maybe if the you know a few weeks ago in Shenzhen, the main port was shut down, um, but there's different options out there. There's another port up north. So I was talking to um, one of the, one of my seller friends in China, and he said that. You know, one shipment that, you know, originally it was planned to send to the port of Shenzhen, it was closed. So they sent the shipment to Xiamen instead. So if, um, you know, we've imagined the map, you know, just north of Shenzhen is the is Xiamen province. They have a port there. So they were able to ship it up. So you literally, you can look at the map of China, you know, you can go up the coast to north or down the coast to south to see, hey, can, can we ship out of that port? If, you know, let's say Shanghai is shut down, right? Can we ship it out of uh, Ningbo, right? Um, so definitely you, you guys have to be flexible to pivot quickly. Um, and I would say number four, the fourth tip is consider having backup suppliers in different parts of China. Okay. Because this way you can reduce your risk. If your main supplier is shut down, Hey, maybe that other supplier in the other province is still operating. So maybe we can offload some of the production to over there. Okay, so this will reduce your risk of putting all your eggs in one basket in case one part of China is shut down. All right, so th that would be like the four ways that I would recommend to reduce the, the impact. Again, number one is to communicate with your suppliers. Number two is keep up with the news, what's changing, uh, what's reopening in three is be flexible, pivot quickly. And number four is consider backup suppliers in different parts to reduce your risk. All right. Thank you for the tips. I'm I'm sure they will be very helpful. And uh, I think as entrepreneurs, our mission is always to solve problems and we need to keep things moving no matter what happens. So I think, for example, the tip of changing um, parts if needed is like, you know, being quick to think on your feet. And um, yeah, so thank you for sharing. Um, there's a question from Keith here. He asks us, how are the shipping delays in Long Beach? Is Matson still a better option? Shipping days delays in Long Beach. Um, again, I I don't have a crystal ball, but I last I heard it was you know not back to the pre pandemic level levels. So um, if you know talk to your freight forwarders, see if um, see, look at the delays. And I, I know certain sellers they're not going to the West Coast. They may be shipping to a, a different port. You know, look look at the map. Right, there's you know ports up in Northern California. There's um, different ports, even on the East Coast. If you're shipping from India, definitely go to East Coast. Don't go to West Coast. Matson is a kind of um, um, a freight forwarder. If you guys haven't heard of them, they're a freight forwarder with some of their own routes. So they're kind of like a high speed freight forwarder. So they do have some of their own routes to clear um, to clear to get the, the goods into the port. Um, I don't know their latest situation with them. I haven't worked the, with them for some time, but you know, definitely talk to them, consider it. Um, you know, again, going back to what we talked about earlier, tip number three, be, be flexible, know the different options out there. So depending on um, your situation, I, I would consider it. All right, thank you. And Keith has two more questions. So can we uh, answer what is a fair rate per kilogram shipping right now? Do you have that number? I, I don't have a, a, a number, but I do know that Freitos has a freight index so literally you can see it's like a stock index I, I don't have the url with me but um i would take a look at freightos's stock index and then they you can get some live quotes from freightos as well so i would use that as a barometer so literally um uh freightos um freight index they call it the baltic freight index so they have an index for sea freight and for air freight so i would check that keith it's a good tip. And Keith also asks, uh, he says that he has been referred to a freight forwarder. How should he go about verifying that they are legit before hiring them? And how can he protect himself? I, w I would do some online research about them. Are they, you know, are, how many years they've been in business? I would ask them, um, you know, what, what type of products they usually sell with, um, the if they're like kind of shady or if you've never heard of them, I would ask about, you know, you know, insurance and, 
you know, what sort of options they they have um, to protect your, yourself in case the your you know your shipping products get lost or damaged. And I would say, you know, be careful. In general, you know, you get what you pay for. I mean, the cheapest like if the price goes below the floor, then, you know, that may be a red flag, right? Um, you know, there's options out there as well from the reputable freight forwarders like Amazon Global Logistics. You know, those guys are owned by Amazon and they offer competitive rates. So I would recommend checking them out. Very good. Keith, uh, Keith actually is just happy. He said that uh, the Fritos tip was an awesome tip. So yeah, I also thought so. It's really cool. And I didn't know that they have it, but I also want to check. Yeah, it out. it's really cool. I, I don't, I mean, I, they, they literally have this graph. It's like a stock, you know, graph. So you can see like, you know, it peaked and it's slightly going down right now. I wish I had that. <laughs> Sorry, I don't have that prepared. I, if I had slides, you know, I had a screenshot, but you know, it's, it's changing every day, but yeah, definitely check them out. All right. Um, I know that, uh, Sophia has a few more questions, but I thought uh, we can make a little break and uh, talk about the VAP session, which uh, we already recorded with Gary. So this session is part of Seller Fest online event. And uh, with every speaker, like with Gary, we uh, prepared another content piece of content, which is accessible only to the VAP package uh, in the in that package and if you upgrade you can have access and uh, gary could you give us an overview of what you shared in that session yeah yeah definitely well you know we were talking about ways to reduce costs and you know people like sellers were asking you know one way is to cut the shipping price right so i actually put together a workshop, a supply chain negotiation hacks to increase your profitability. So we looked at a number of different ways to reduce your costs um, beyond just shipping, beyond just price, and also ways that you can work with your supplier to renegotiate all of these different things. Um, you know, we talked about uh, different ways that we can do this and also, you know, what not to do, some common mistakes that sellers are doing to leave money on the table. So if you are sourcing from China, if let's say, Let's say your these high shipping prices are affecting you. I would definitely recommend that you check it out. And um, yeah, I think number one thing right now, um, you know, it is the wild west in e-commerce. You know, things are unpredictable. But you know, one of the the key things that successful sellers are doing to come up ahead is to increase your profitability. Whether you're just getting started, or even if you're thinking about exits, you know, if you can increase your profitability by like let's say one dollar, you may be able to turn that into like five to seven dollars if you decide to sell your business because you know we're working with um, you know sellers are are you know exiting and selling their businesses right. So with those multiples, so I think that will be super valuable for you guys if you do want to um, renegotiate. And I mean, I think if you're not renegotiating, you're leaving money on the table basically. So. Yeah, we recorded this session together and really I loved uh, some of your visual examples, how you can uh, save on uh, shipping and a few other tips you gave in that yes. VAP session. And yes. we did a start... case study as well. Yeah. So we have a real case study from actually using a product. I'm not going to give it away, but that product may be sitting in your living room right now, guys. If... Yeah. <laughs> and uh... so... Yeah. Yeah. So VAP package yeah. includes not only Gary's session, but 20 more sessions with all the speakers, which you will meet uh, during Seller Fest online on the live streams. But uh, I think it's worth of investment to get some additional uh, tips and recommendations from speakers. And uh, uh, we have a few more questions, right, Sofia? Yes, I have some more questions that I think it's a perfect time to ask them to you. So without giving too much away, because I understood that this is also part of the VIP package, but without giving it all away, I would like to know what are some rookie mistakes that, uh, you know, new sellers make or sellers that don't know uh, too much about the topic yeah. make when contacting new suppliers? Yeah, um, I would say, I mean, everyone wants to find a trustworthy supplier, right? So, I mean, let's say you, you've done your homework, you've narrowed it down, you're ready to place an order. After you place the order, that's when the real business actually starts. That's not the end, right? So there's an expression that I really believe in, which is trust, 
but verify, right? You There's some trust there, but you have to constantly verify. What do I mean by that? You have to check in with your supplier, right? Don't just place the order, sit back. You know, they say 30 days and 30 days later, it's like, okay, let's, let's ship it out. You have to really, you know, verify. You have to check in on them. How's the production going? Can you share some photos from the production line? I want to make sure that, hey, you know, we made that change, right? Can you show me that? Oh, about the packaging? Do you have the barcodes ready? Can you take a picture, share that with me uh, before you ship it out? Um, let's make sure we do the pre-shipment inspection, right? I mean, don't overlook that, right? So trust, but verify. And also, especially right now, you know, maybe, you know, when you place the order, they weren't locked down, but your factory in, in Shandong now, you know, maybe they're, they've stopped. They're so busy right now. They, they don't have the manpower to let you know, you know, you got to make that call. You got to, you know, send that message or, you know, chat with them. Mm -hmm. So definitely trust, but verify. I think that's key. But it's, it is a fine line, right? Between... Um you know, being in touch and uh, working together on it or being too, contacting too much? Like w how often is too often from your point of view? I I think it's very, very difficult to over communicate. I think, um, I mean, this is important to you guys, right? I mean, if it's important, then I, I would, you know, I would definitely stay on top of that, right? Um, you know, I was talking to one seven figure seller based in India um, you know, obviously the Indian culture is a little different from Chinese culture, but he said that the suppliers in India, they actually, if you don't, you know, keep, you know, pestering them, they think this, you don't care about the, the order, right? They'll put you in the back of the production line, right? If someone else is keeping, you keep bugging on them, they'll pay more attention to that, right? So I, I would be less worried about that than, you know, not paying attention and letting, you know, mistakes fall through the cracks. Good tip. We have also another question from Keith, and he asks, what do you think of sourcing from 1688? Is there a way to get protected protected similarly to Alibaba Trade Assurance? Yeah, so um, so for those of you that guys that don't know what 1680, 1680 is a domestic China online sourcing site. It's owned by Alibaba. So this is mainly for domestic China products. Some sellers do use this. Um, the thing is the platform is 100% in Chinese and those sellers mostly they don't have export licenses. So if you do want to get those products shipped, you know, first off, I would do like a quality control and make sure that the quality level is um, is up to par um, because, you know, having me myself lived in China for over a decade, what is acceptable for a local China market may not be acceptable for international like US or Europe market because of the different quality standards. So I would say that's number one. If you do want to consider it. Number two is the, the and the suppliers normally don't have export licenses. So without getting into the details, nitty gritty, um, most of these suppliers would need to work with a trading company to export these products. So whether that's your main supplier or a third party, you have to factor that into the cost. So I um, mean, for me, I don't really use 1688 for what I'm looking for. So I, I, I don't recommend that you spend too much time. In terms of protection with 1688, um, obviously there's no Alibaba trade insurance that covers 1688. So um, I would definitely, you know, make sure you do your QC and, you know, make sure you negotiate payment ter terms that are fair to you and, and fair for everyone to, to protect yourself. All right. And uh, since we're talking about 1688, we mentioned it briefly before, but I, I've also always had the question um, is like, what are the pros and cons of contacting a supplier through Alibaba directly? Um, I, I wonder if there are other ways in which um, we will portray ourselves as serious buyers, as someone that we, you know, will be long-term partners with them. What do you think yeah. about this? Yeah, I would say ways to how to pre how to portray yourself as a serious and professional buyer, ways to increase your response rates. Um, I would, number one, I would do my homework. I would be very detailed and specific in my request for quotation in the initial email. Don't just send an email, ask for MOQ and lowest price, right? I would give them um, a simple forecast about, you know, your expected volumes, not just, you know, what's your lowest MOQ. Um, uh, I, many years ago, I sat down um, to a panel of Chinese suppliers and they were asked this question. Um, they say that 
what type of inquiries they pay most attention to, the more detailed it is, the more, um, you know, with the spe exact specifications, the more likely they think you're a serious buyer. So I would spend a little bit more time in the RFQ phase to, um, to increase your response rates and that will make you look more professional. Great tip. Thank you. Definitely the detail and then we know what we want. It shows that we are very serious about it. Okay, we have one more question from Daniel and he, uh, he says, having trouble trying to find the right supplier for new product line we want to sell. We ordered two samples now and both not up to our standards. What, what would you do? Wish we could travel to China. Hmm. Yes, well, unfortunately we cannot travel to China. Um, I, for the two samples, not up to quality standards, I would ask myself, is it, you know, how bad is it? Is it something that you can, they can tweak and they can fix, or are they just totally out of the ballpark? Um, I, because most of the times, if this is the first round of samples, it may not be perfect, but let's say if it's 90% or is 95% of the way there, I mean, do you feel comfortable they can do this? I mean, look at their, their history i mean is, is this the main product that they're doing if you're you know sourcing um like a leather wallet for example you know look on their look on their um alibaba page is this the main thing that they're doing how many years history do they have 10 years history making you know, wallets if so they probably have a good experience to make those tweaks if you're 90 percent of the way there if you look on their website you know they're selling wallets and you know iphone cases and you know um, fidget spinners then probably they're a trading company maybe they don't have the same experience so i i would say that um, see if you can salvage it. If not, then I would look for more suppliers um, and possibly, you know, hire someone, you know, on the ground in China to to see if they can to, to help you. All right, great. Thank you very much for our insightful uh, session. I think we don't have any more questions. I have one more chat. question, actually. Oh, yes. I have one more spontaneous question about the exactly the last thing you mentioned, which was hire someone on the on the field uh, in China to help you. How can sellers go about finding a sourcing agent or someone there to help them? Yeah, yeah. if it is not a secret. Yeah, if it's not a secret. If it's not a secret, yeah. I say, you know, in terms of sourcing agents, some people, you know, like these sourcing agents, they're, some of them are just like a one woman show, right? A one man show. You know, I, I have certain partners that I, um, they don't have the capacity to take on like a hundred new people, right? So that's why people don't really share them. So, you know, obviously I, you know, I work with some um, selected like suppliers and, um, I would say you have to do your due diligence. Um, you can find sourcing agents on Alibaba, you know, on global sources. So look for um, sourcing agents that have experience in your industry. For example, going back to wallets, you know, I, I know that even big companies like Target, you know, some of them, they work through um, sourcing agents, trading companies. Why do they do that? Because they have a more extensive network in China to find more suppliers that you wouldn't be able to find, you know, off of Alibaba. Obviously there could be, there's going to be a price for that. Right. But you have to do the end of the day calculation. So I would, um, I would continue to, to do that, um, to, to vet that. Um, I, I can share one sourcing, uh, trading company in Yiwu if that's okay because i i know that he has a team of about 100 people and he's able to to help certain sellers is that okay to give out or should we save that for some other time <laughs> we can ask in the audience do people want now i think it's fine do you course. guys want that if not you know we'll, we'll forget you know i'll yeah. just share with sophia later because yeah. uh, i, I want to <laughs> okay I'll, I'll definitely share with sophia but if you guys want it then um <laughs> then we can share that. but besides that um augustus I, I actually prepared a bonus like a free pdf yeah. it's the it's a negotiations guide with the with the url is it okay for for us to give that out to our uh, audience, da or? Daniel, I'm sure he's responding to the previous uh, answer. 
and everybody wants everything they want your bonus and for sure they want your uh to reveal your the okay I, i'd with. love i'm glad that you know there's people passionate about this not just me because i woke up at six o'clock or actually five o'clock here in japan for this so okay let me give you one okay that's great great okay so i'll give you guys two bonuses okay number one this is totally spontaneous because sophia you asked for it and everyone asked for it okay um there's one sourcing agent that i work with in yiwu his his company is called jing sourcing um the reason that i feel okay to give it out because he has a team of about 100 people uh, working with him so he can probably take on um you guys let them know that you heard about him from gary so you know they can make sure to um to give you hopefully to give you guys some more attention because i know they're quite busy but he's based in yiwu um so you know if it's like a small product you know he's good with suppliers around Zhejiang province so he may be able to help you obviously there's no superman superwoman trading it um, company that does everything if you're doing electronics he probably can't help you um you need someone down in shenzhen but i would say that's one quick tip for you guys so keith says that he's using it and uh daniel yeah. is very help very happy daniel is calling you a legend so i think that's good feedback he's <laughs> reminding you. uh you that you are a legend legend is helpful okay and yeah, Augustus, keith, if you can you. please screenshot that and share that with me later oh, yeah, i, I would love to we make thank you, you uh, good screen. luck Good yeah. luck. And oh, okay. So the second bonus, guys, if it's okay, Augustus, I, I have, you know, as I mentioned earlier, I have a, our free weekly newsletter, the 8020 of e-commerce. So, you know, I, I literally, I, I blog about that. My team and I, we blog about this every week, every Friday. So, you know, we come up with the latest news from China, also e-commerce trends. So um, if it's okay, I have I put together that bonus. And then also um, I have a negotiations guide, a free PDF negotiations uh, ultimate guide you know how you can negotiate with suppliers this is in addition to the vip workshop that we're doing so if you're joining the vip workshop um you'll be able to get this but i wanted to share this with you as well because this is different from the workshop but this is something that you can take away um and if you're asking about lowering the price so um just one second while i get the the url for you one second please and uh, meanwhile uh, those people who are still watching uh, today, this session is the last, and don't forget to tune in tomorrow, Tuesday, March 29th at uh, 2 p.m. UK, 9 a.m. Eastern. In Philippines, it will be 9 a.m., 9 p.m. So, yeah, please tune in to tomorrow's sessions. Uh, please make sure that you are subscribed to SellerFest online. You will receive an email with the upcoming sessions tomorrow. And uh, we have one more question, but uh, let me fix, um, show that link. So there is a link and we'll drop it in the chat. Actually, for the people watching uh, replay, we have to show it on the screen because chat will not be available. So basically it's uh, mailchi.mp, it's like MailChimp, uh, 8020sourcing.com seller fest workshop. And yes. uh, there one more time what they will find and yeah so two things one is they'll get our free weekly email newsletter so if what we talked about today is helpful you know i always <clears throat> share the latest updates from sourcing from e-commerce news and then secondly will i will share a free pdf um, ultimate guide to negotiating with your supplier so you you can save time and money. Um, you know, we talk a little bit about finding a trustworthy supplier, so you'll get some more information there, and it's free. Okay. And uh, Errol John is happy. Thank you so much, Gary. Marek says, hi, man, from uh, LH. Oh, <laughs> it's, I know this person. I know what he means. And uh, Orange Click says, thanks, guys, for joining. So thank you. <laughs> thank you, Sophia. Thank you, Augustus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Gary. Good luck in your business and um, Gary's links you will find below in the description. Also, Gary, very briefly in uh, one word, how do you help Amazon sellers? No, joking, in one sentence. I help Amazon sellers save time and money with sourcing, 8020 sourcing, and also we have um, the Seven Figure Seller Summit. So, you know, I always try to feature what successful sellers are doing so you guys can learn and do it too. 
All right, uh, Gabriel says, thank you, a few more thanks. This session was awesome. Thank you, all of you. Thank you, Gustav yes. Sophia Orange Click, for today. Earl John, thank you for not misspelling my name. It's very rare by people uh, writing my name. All right, thank you. And now I would like to say goodbye to Gary and Sophia. Goodbye. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. And uh, now uh, I would like to invite you to watch other video with Gary, where he uh, talks about sourcing from Vietnam, India, US, basically other countries, not only from China. <laughs>